the Xerixian Empire attacked your home world, forcing you to take refuge on the Rock of Brawl. There, you met a sympathetic Greek. Greek? What? <laughs> <laughs> sympathetic Gif named Crux aboard his ship, the Second Wind. You were headed to the Wizard's Tower. A Wizard's Tower, rather. A startographer on the outskirts of the wild space system that you're currently in, where Crux hopes to acquire a map to a different wild space system wherein lies a coalition of peoples that are trying to destroy the, the Xerixian Empire. En route to the tower, the second wind was attacked by Hastain, an evil ally of the Xerixian Empire. He boarded your ship, duplicated himself, you killed the shit out of him, but his ship slash familiar slash friend slash huge monstrous creature, the aesthetic, shot a scream across wild space at the second wind and disabled Starbo, the heart of the second wind, and you are left drifting in wild space. Captain that was a- Oh, go ahead. Takes a drag from his pipe, says, settle in, everyone. We could be here for a while. That was it. That was a fantastic recap, is all I was going to say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sympathetic. The sympathetic Greek is somehow like 10 times funnier and <laughs> better. A sympathetic Greek just <laughs> on the rock of brawl. <laughs> yeah, just, I, somehow I don't have a witty comeback for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Jesus Christ. Um, but yeah, you're on the ship. Uh, you did some checks and you think it's probably going to be several days that you'll be stuck out here. What do? What do indeed? As fell we, oh, go ahead. Did we already ask questions about if it was a curse or if we could tell if it was a curse? I feel like I already asked you all this stuff. No, you, no, we didn't really uh, investigate, get a chance to investigate it too much other than some basic arcana checks. Um, mm. Although there were some arcana checks and yeah, there, it was, this is not a curse. It's it's more just a solid magical effect from the scream of the mm. aesthetic. Would something our, our like lesser restoration up. or restoration magic in general help or no? You could try or perhaps make an arcana check there was another question as well from brian i think oh no i'm just stating that our, our the large tree is merely unconscious mm-hmm. not mm-hmm. dead merely unconscious um but yeah if you want to do an arcana check or try to cast a spell or however you want to might figure out how restoration magics might help um you're free to try stuff okay well i don't have that prepped right now but i could for tomorrow Mm-hmm. <clears throat> uh, fell Ardra we is, is sorry, we soft. Were looking for, Go ahead. I'm sorry. We were looking for restoration spells. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure that it would do anything, but I figured, why not try? <laughs> well, I've got it prepped. If you have the spell slot for it. Yeah, I'll I'll drop a lesser restoration real quick. And doing that, um, assuming you're you're casting that on Starbo. Yes. Um does not seem to have much of an effect whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, this is a serious issue. Um, I don't know. Does this work on a... Oh, humanoid. That's why. Not a humanoid. Okay. A school of space fish swim past. <laughs> glittering in the space light. Half hour passes. <laughs> Can I make a medicine check to see if there's anything I can think of to help when people have been or not people, beings have been shocked or whatever by, I don't even know I don't know what I'm saying, I'm just trying to I'm just trying (laughs) You can make a medicine check, sure Yeah, yeah, there's not much to to find out here with your knowledge from such a terrestrial place, what just happened seemed very extra very extra. Yeah, you like <laughs> that. Um, what's the captain's name again? Crux. Um, I'll go up to him and say, "Are there any repairs that need to be made on the ship, or anything else that 
needs preparing or working on while you're sitting here. <laughs> well, I appreciate the offer. Uh, Lynch has been doing uh, a bit of a tatter work job on the sails there, and you can see that they are pretty patchwork. Um, if you can do any better, that that could certainly help, you know, sustain them a little longer. Um, and he says that out of the earshot sight, earshot of Mister Flinch, who has slowly started emerging from the cabin at this point, uh, looking distraught. Um, it seems he is very worried about Starbo, but also doesn't know what to do. Mm, I don't personally really have much to help with that. Maybe <laughs> one of my companions does. What, mending? Oh, <laughs> no, that's fine. And yeah, we have we have about a week. Uh, it seems like by my best reckoning, it's hard to really tell. But uh, we have time. Have you ever seen anything like this happen before? Oh yeah, sure, sure. Uh, it's pretty rare. I I've never seen a beast quite like that. Pointing off in the direction the aesthetic wandered after distressingly losing its companion, friend, creator. Um, but there are certain magics that certain people know how to do that can have a similar effect. When hmm. I've seen it happen, there's not much to do but wait it out. Unless there's some kind of removed magic kind of thing. But uh, I don't know. I never really got into magic myself. I have the ability to dispel magic. That might help. Hard to know. I'll go cast it. Uh, let's see. Oh, boy. Yeah, I... It doesn't seem to have much of an effect, so far as I can tell. Um, let me try one more thing. Okay. Just in case. Also doesn't seem to help very much. <laughs> He's rubbing his face all over my face. That's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Enough. not really sure what to do. <laughs> Enough time passes for a short rest to occur mm. and I get perception checks from people who might be looking around at the space Ooh. Uh, Gertie you are able to see pretty quickly um, out in the distance what appears to be a pod of five to six huge looking very large creatures and I wish this website worked better I would be showing you what they look like right now. We but can still roll as many hit dice as it takes during short rest, right? That didn't change. I'm pretty sure that did not change. What the hell, man? Okay. Um, wish this website was better than it's currently being to me. Ooh. Oh, space whales. Space whales. Uh, did. Oh, pretty. Their eyes flashing as they appear to be heading your direction ever so slowly. Uh, Are these creatures dangerous? Oh, no, no. Those creatures could be our lifeline out of here. Oh. Majestic. If we can get them to help out, we might be able to maybe ride them out or possibly attach the boat with some ropes to them if they're if we're really if they're willing to help us out they can uh help us out a lot are they within 30 feet uh not at this point they are about 500 feet out and slowly making their way it doesn't look like they're headed right at you but it looks like they'll pass within about 100 feet do you have a way of speaking to them i can but i need to be much closer Within 30 feet. Well, or maybe we so. could attract them over somehow. How do you propose we do that? No, they wouldn't happen to speak common, would they? No, not common as such, but I think you can talk to them telepathically if you can talk telepathically. Um, and I think they like flashing lights, generally speaking, but I don't have any way of doing that. What about a moonbeam? 
Oops, I didn't mean to. I just wanted to see it. A moonbeam would do really well. Roko stands at the front of the ship and appear and rapidly sheaths, unsheath and resheaths his sword, which does glow. In. <laughs> <laughs> That's with fair. Yellow light. With yellow light, uh, d- does it does it have a, a range of that glow? Is it like five, ten feet, <laughs> something like that? Back. I'm, yeah, I'm just just wondering how bright this this glow is. Out to 120 feet, I have uh, the dancing lights cantrip. Nice. Ooh. It seems like all four of you have. That would be this. better. Uh, it should moon be moonlight. Takes a second level spell. It's bright light, 15 feet, and oh yeah, dim totally. light for an additional 15. Absolutely, totally bright enough. Uh, you were the first one to act. You, you said you were doing it, and thus Rokos does it. And um, make a persuasion check, Rokos. That change yet? Oh, I think it might have. So it's like three, maybe. A charisma persuasion check. You gain a mm. bonus to the check equal to your wisdom mod. Mm. Okay. Did I already account for that? No, that I did. <laughs> persuasion. Or did I? Pretty sure I'm writing this correctly. Yeah. What is yeah. my charisma? Excuse me. Charisma. I did. Okay, I see what I. Yeah, I, I think I, I went in and added it to my automatically to my uh, persuasion check because I have plus four to it and I shouldn't except for my wisdom. There we go. And that is just enough to make it happen as it appears that two of the Indori <laughs> split off from the rest of the pod and head a little closer to your direction. Attracted by the flashing light, they begin flashing their own several lights. Wait, oh. wait, wait. wait. Maybe it didn't. No, it did. We're good. We are good. I'm sorry. I just wanted to make sure that was correct. We're all good. I only have a one modifier to my wisdom. I looked at the. I was stupid in looking at my saves at first. So this is all. All is. All is well. It's all good. If, if all... they get within 30 feet, I would like to start um, using my ability to speak to them. And yeah, they will come uh, within 30 feet. In fact. Well, within 15 feet. I'm just making sure I'm in the right. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, and you can start talking to him. What would you like to say to this, Kendori? Hello, friends. We need help if you would be so kind as to help us. It's less words you get, it's, it's a very animalistic mind that you're feeling out of both of these creatures. Intelligent for animals, but animalistic nonetheless. Uh, you get a feeling of surprise, um, but a calm kind of surprise, not so excited. It's very like, oh, that's interesting. Um, there's a willingness to help, um, but also they need to remain on track. You would need to make a either animal handling check or a persuasion check, and I'll need to I'll allow you to do that at advantage due to your ability to communicate telepathically. Okay. Well, <laughs> oh, advantage. Whoopsies. Did not. Did it go through already? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Out of one mind, you get a feeling of, no, we should probably stick with the group and we shouldn't fall behind. But the other mind overwhelms the first and says, no, we have time. We should help these people. They seem interesting. And out of the two of them, they will allow you to help them out or allow yourself. (laughs) They will help you. (laughs) (laughs) With getting information from Crux as to how exactly to do this, I explain whatever process he thinks would work. Sure, sure. Uh, He instructs that you should probably lash up these Kandori with some ropes that he has on board. Um, Who would like to do some rope work to try to tie this boat to a couple of space whales? Uh, What would that be? Slide a hand? Yeah, slide a hand. Uh, That'll work. (laughs) (laughs) Is there anyone good at sleight of hand? Anyone else have a better sleight of hand? Than, uh, I got zero. Same. I got two. Uh, what's that? I've got two. It might be me. Uh, I'm talking about sleight of hand. So. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. <clears throat> Ouch. 
Uh, does, does anybody want to aid? I'll help you. All right, one tick. And yeah, with uh, the two of you out there getting familiar with these space whales and getting these I'm ropes using, around. I'm using my telepathy crystal so that I can talk with them. Too. Ooh, very cool. Oh. Yeah, they uh, yeah they respond as kind of animals would with those feelings. They can't really express words, but you understand them as you do, Wendy. Uh, a dog's emotions just so well. <laughs> yeah, completely in tune. <laughs> as if you were communicating with the actual words. Got it. That's exactly how it works for yeah. for you and the celestial <laughs> crystal with with <laughs> play. <laughs> It's <laughs> oh, that's a deep cut. <laughs> oh. Um, but yeah, I I imagine that uh, it will take about three days with the Kandori help. And please, if you can, express our, our gratitude towards them. And I don't know if we'll be able to reward them in any way, but it's really kind of them. What do you guys like to eat? <laughs> uh, you get kind of a, a almost a smell comes the thought of the smell of space fish. Mm, interesting. And you have seen schools of space fish and jellyfish fly past your, your boat as you've been out in wild space. Uh, General Hippo, do you have any nets on board that we might be able <laughs> to, use to catch some space space fish? Uh, uh, no, no nets. It's not a fishing vessel. General Hippo? Huh? Oh, did I say I'm sorry. I meant Commodore Crook. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> we, ha- we have some poles if you want to use them as we're traveling. That's oh, always boy. an option. Um, but no nets. <laughs> Jesus. The most singularly rude thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Miss Cow. Species and rank. Right. <laughs> Do I call you Priest Cow? Is that how this works? <laughs> that's actually the translation of Gertie. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> On the so <money>. sure. <laughs> Well, I feel like it'd be rude not to call you by the name you choose, right? Uh, you know, um, I was given a name that I didn't choose, and I have to go oh, with it anyway. That's a fair point. I guess I didn't pick my name either. Don't we all? Yeah, I was going to say. Interesting. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when ships break down a wild space. You start having existential <laughs> conversations. And... Yeah. Absolutely. Who am I anyway? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Do I feel like Dominic because I was named that? <laughs> oh, man. Um, I'll, I'll take a poll, though. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Uh, it feels like we're going about. It'll probably be about three days now that we're uh, moving at a bit of a slower pace. So we'll definitely have some time for this to grow. I, I have a thing for this. Uh, cool. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, during these three days of travel, uh, you see beautiful space pass you by. Uh, you, how many hours during these three days are you going to try your hand at astral fiction? Dirty. And you'll have other time to do other stuff too if you want to, but how mm. many times? How many of these hours are you spending fishing? Mm, well, they're really big, so I gotta catch a lot. <laughs> so, most of my time, probably. Okay, let's call that uh, 18 <laughs> hours of yeah. actual fishing. Cool. Can you roll 18 wow. survival checks for me real quick? Oh, shit. <laughs> other people will have a chance to do other stuff, too. Uh, I think I'd quite like to make 18 checks myself. <laughs> 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 Brilliant. 18. Okay, that's one. With two, an advantage. Three, oh, no. Four, five, six, <laughs> seven. 
Uh, can you roll seven d10 for me, please? Oh my god! Remember, there is the uh, the thing you can use on the side. I didn't want uh, to. Uh, uh, okay, I'm I'm just saying. You, you can. <laughs> I wanted to click it eighteen times. It was really satisfying. <laughs> Interesting, interesting thing that's happened here. Um, okay, let's open up this. No, that's not a thing. Brilliant. Let's try this one more time. All right. What you are able to catch is um, several groups. Okay, that's one, two, yep, three. Brilliant. Uh, a whole bunch of small edible fish, um, just like enough to feed what would feel like working on it. It feels like it would feed up to 20 people, the amount of fish that you got uh, okay. over the course of that time. Okay. Uh, additionally, um, as you're trying to pull up what feels like a real hardy one and it's under the boat, you don't really get a good sense of what's going on. Uh, you are attacked by a space seal, but <laughs> only because it's- Wait, space eel or space seal space eel not okay. seal that would have been hilarious <laughs> um, <laughs> like, Damn. Just, just there's out so of much there. that i could tell so much <laughs> <laughs> and those are quickly followed by two um gray scavers uh which appear to be something like space sharks and oh. i did not expect this fight to happen uh Let's say this fight happens on the third day. Um, what is everybody else doing in the next couple of days? So as <laughs> we might uh, get a, a, a map going. Roko I... wonders in his mind, what does it mean when someone says you look like a Michael? Christ. You look like a what? A Michael. My oh. I get it. Uh, Oops. Okay. Dang it. So we need a space eel. I would like to be talking to the whales and asking them about all of the things that they have seen throughout their space travels. Uh, yeah, absolutely. They'll they'll tell you stories best they can. They don't again. They don't oh, right. really have, like language. <laughs> um, but yeah, as best we can. Yeah, as best swapping and, stories. Yeah, yeah, and. Uh, Mostly you'll get stuff about like the biggest pods of fish that they've seen. Like that's the most exciting thing for them <laughs> is huge pods of space fish. <laughs> um, and they, they've, it seems that they haven't really gone out into the Asheville Sea as much. So the, the planets that they have seen, the, one is the one that you left behind, uh, as you can remember from the one glance you got of it from real far away. They send kind of images of that planet and the uh, surrounding three moons from you know space, but also a darker planet um, that doesn't seem to have any moons, much smaller that you don't recognize at all. Um, traveling <laughs> meteorites, the single star at the center of the system, space, <laughs> dime. <laughs> Uh, cool. I guess I could move you guys. Did I do that on that layer? That's dumb. Why did I do that? Let's did move I that. do that? I did do that. Let's move this to... I suppose over the three days that we're on here, I think mm -hmm. I would like to uh, take out the pocketbook and start waxing poetic on uh, on our space travels. Mm -hmm. Do you want to make... Oh, no, go ahead. Can you make a performance check for me? Just to see how well you did? Coming up. Oh, oh yeah. Nice. Whoa. What you understand to be an instant classic <laughs> is, is in your possession. Like, you know you know how good you are. I, I, I invented the bagpipe rendition of the Doctor Who theme song. <laughs> 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 I learned how to play Hurdy Gurdy specifically. <laughs> All right. I believe I have this battle pretty much prepared to go. Pretty background. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, that... some dummy. That's a dummy thick. Really. Whoa. 
That's a dummy thick what? Grid. Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> yep. He wasn't lying. That, that grid do have boundaries. <laughs> it was Christ. made in Pixar. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> mm. The the Hartman parallelity. Um. So yeah, I guess we can roll into initiative as Gertie is shocked that the space seal is now hostile in front of them, and even more shocked that it is being oh shit pursued. What is that a nose? How come it's a nose I, eye? It's because it's fucked the, up. Uh, okay, that it, it's All fucked right. up is why. That's my bad. Okay, Rokos needs to be given a turn. And Rokos rolled a 16 with that. Oh, did, we, did we clear the thing? Yeah, that was my B. Uh, I'm fixing it. I also saw that you rolled a 6. I got you. I got all excited. I looked over at the thing and I saw my glowing 27 and realized that's not what, what that roll was. <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, I'm on fire. No, I. that was exactly the one fire. I am a pendulum swung. And did Gertie roll? Or oh, you? sorry. No, I didn't. Was it is the is that command broken, or did something just go weird? Jeez, so, no, I didn't clear it from last time. Is what oh, okay. happened. So we can. So, use it. Yeah, you can use it. Yeah, it, it worked work. for me. Okay. Uh, I thought I gave Fashaw his six. I did. Okay, brilliant. That's a nineteen. That's a seventeen. Sixteen. Oh, Gertie got one. one. Yeah. Wow, brilliant. Yep. Uh. <laughs> and you're the one getting hit. Yep. <laughs> Uh, the first thing that happens in this fight that you notice is that these shark things, these scavers, as you might hear um, the Commodore, Commodore call them throughout the course of this fight. I know I'm, my words are terrible and I, it's bad. I'm loving it. I'm, so, I'm, not, I'm not laughing at you. I'm, I'm, actually, I'm just enjoying it. I want to <laughs> Don't think I'm sitting here like, what an idiot. No, I'm just loving it. Because, like, yeah, the Kermiter. Kermiter. Yeah. <laughs> Kermiter. Uh, it appears that these two gray scavers are attacking this eel. Um, and they each take a bite out of it. Uh, and, yeah, between the two of them, they, they murder this eel just in front of oh, shit. the eel that you're pulling up out of space is suddenly eaten right in front of you by two much larger creatures. My dinner! Uh, and they do turn to look at you once <laughs> they're done eating. It does not seem that you are safe. It is Xanril's turn. And we're just, we can use theater of the mind. You all can reach these things with, mm -hmm. you know, different attacks that'll work out. Mm. Uh, I, I'm just gonna try talking to them at first and say, um, turn around, there's nothing for you here. I guess I could only do one, so the one that's, uh, the bottom one. Sure. Uh, do you want to make a persuasion or intimidation check? Depending uh, on what sure. Persuasion. <laughs> that is a hell of a check. However... These are predators, and they are in a bloodlust right now, very shark-like, and you do not seem to be able to get through to their mind like that to calm them in such a way. All right. That was a, we can call that a bonus action, though. It's, or, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you just tried to talk. Um, then I guess I'll Eldridge Blast them. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's a pretty animalistic, like, blood eat. It's a frenzy oh, when, that you hear back, so. That's weird. Hang on a minute. Oh, wow. Uh, wow. Yeah, the oh first my one God. definitely goes through. The second one definitely misses wildly. Uh, how much HP do these? What the fuck? That's interesting. Okay, let me check something. Why? I didn't notice this till just now, but no. Okay, they do. Then what's their... What the fuck? Sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> technical difficulties. These things seem to not have an AC. <laughs> Weird. Oh, yeah, it, it's a pretty important thing. I'm looking at this is it, thing. Is it, is it the token that's not showing an AC? Or is the, it on the sheet? The sheet also does not show an AC. Oh, that's that not accurate. accurate. No, no, it's, it's certainly not accurate. <laughs> uh, I mean, I can just do a... 
a quick googly woogly, right? That should pop up. That's weird. Agreed. Don't like it. Got it. Cool. Armor class 12. Sorry. I should probably shouldn't have said that out loud. Doesn't matter. We're fine. <laughs> um, reason, that is exactly what I had assumed. <laughs> that first blast instantly bloodies um, one of these creatures doing massive damage. And he kind of wishes that he listened to you at this point. Yeah. But still seems to be coming after you. Second blast goes, misses off wildly different direction. It's like, okay, okay. I guess that wouldn't make sense to you guys. But, you know, for people with penises, you know how when you're peeing, sometimes the stream goes off in a different direction and splits, and you have to deal with Say that? Say less, fam. <laughs> What'd you say? Say less, fam. Uh-huh. Yeah. Van, yeah. <laughs> anything else you want to do? <laughs> uh, Carmen, I'm hip with the kids, okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't understand you. <laughs> oh, were you talking to me? Oh, yeah. I heard general. And of course, <laughs> that is not. <laughs> general hippo? Yeah, no, she, that's not so. It's Commodore. Commodore. <laughs> Commodore Hooper. The Commodore. <laughs> and I was like, but it's my turn. And then I was like, oh, you said Xandra. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go after the one that just got blasted. Sure. Which, by the way, new Sunny. Two new episodes of Sunny are out. They're weird. Yeah. Oof. Ooh, second one. Just does it. How do you want to kill one of these sharks? Through the gills. Oh. <laughs> and it's, it's skewered on. It, it's like out the other side, just the tip of your moon touch blade glows through the second set of gills as it pierces entirely through this creature. Maybe the whales would like to eat that as well. Perhaps. For sure. I mean, assuming Rokos is done. Uh, yes. Rokos yeah. Done. yeah. For sure muted. Brian left. I am, I am here and I am present and I am going to... Uh, <laughs> well, it doesn't look like it takes much effort. Uh, I'm going to <laughs> shatter. Uh, targeting in such a position as to... Uh, not hit the other bodies. Easy enough. There's just the one shark left. I just want to say it's not a shark; it's a scaver. But I feel ahead. like this is this particular spell is one of the players' favorites because every game I've seen where this particular player plays, they have the spell. Hmm. Is this accurate, particular player? <laughs> uh, Shatter's just a good <laughs> spell, and it is available. <laughs> yeah, Shatter is a good spell. Mm-hmm. To be fair, it's two bards. Mm. <laughs> that is fair. Uh, that constitution save will not happen. Uh, they do have more than that amount of HP, but you also instantly bloody this thing as it starts to bleed from its gills. It hears from them? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Anything else with your bits? I guess I probably shouldn't say it like that. <laughs> uh, no, I don't believe my bits are going to go any further than this. <laughs> it's probably for the best. <laughs> That's a shame. <laughs> Why does this always happen? Um, Gertz, they're right in oh, front Gert, of you. Your, Gert. your friends all had initiative to help out before you could, could even get over the shop. Uh, but now you feel ready. <laughs> Um, Gertie will cast Sacred Flame. Looking for a little dex save. Um, dexterity save is going to pass. Does this mm. do half damage? Nope. <clears throat> no damage. Okay. Um, really hoping. It, it would have done it. I want to use a whole spell slot, although I wouldn't. I should. Doesn't matter. Um, yeah, I will. I'm going to use my angelic flight. And my bonus action is to start um, to sprout my spectral wings and fly backwards because this thing scared <laughs> me. Absolutely. And it wasn't right up on you. It, you know, it was still at like space eel. So yeah, yeah I had a feeling. Happen. And yeah, yeah I, I would have done that like while sh- totally. uh, casting the sacred flame. Yeah, Actually. yeah. And <laughs> assuming at the same time as all your friends are attacking, you're freaking out, moving backwards. Ooh. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> 
Uh, let's see. The last person, yeah, the only person really that's done damage to this one in particular was the recounter for Shaw. Mm. The whole world? Oh, oh. yeah, it's, it's actually gone undamaged. The whole life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks pristine, as, except for the blood pouring out of its gills. Does a space shark have gills? We established it did. Um, <laughs> it clearly does in this picture, as far as I'm there you concerned. Go. Looking it at filter it. feeds the void, obviously. Yes. Uh, attacking the recounter, its frenzy and fury seems to have taken it off course, and it misses taking off your head entirely with its sharp jaws. Whoa. That's what these slits are, right? Yeah. One, I agree. two, three, four gills. I'm into it. Space gills. One of the defining features of a fish is that it has gills. Therefore, space fish has space gills. Mm-hmm. Pew, pew. Ooh. Whoa, That's, what the? Yeah, they'll both hit. Ooh. That second one, almost unnecessarily. Um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, whatever. Uh, actually, no, it, it was perfect. Um, how do you want these two beams to finish off this rampaging space monster? Blast it away, off into the space. And yeah, it does repel off in a different direction. Starts floating gently away at the edge of your gravity plane. Dirty, what you are able to notice is that the body of the remaining scaver, the space seal was was pretty well devoured. Yeah. Um, but the body of the remaining scaver is worth another 20 portions. Wow. Of, of fish. Success. And that is a success. Um, yeah. Indeed, indeed. And uh, did we cover every, what everybody was doing over three days? I know that there was writing I being was done. Jet. Uh, there was a thought being done about names. <laughs> um, a single thought. <laughs> Did Xander do a thing Whoa. over the course of these few, few days? I was talking to the That's whales. Right. That's right. Um, and you do see that they were slightly perturbed at the fight. You know, don't see, but when you talk to them again. Um, but they figure that was fine. And if they were fucked with, they, they probably could have held their own too. I'll tell them that I tried to, um, you know, talk to them first and just have them leave, but they did not seem to wish to do that and were attacking us. And yeah, they'll, they'll get like kind of a thought that generally creatures like that, scavers, they don't like to to think talk too much they they're much more attacky from what these two creatures have seen i'll activate my um telepathy crystal again to bring the fish to them and say Mm -hmm. i'm sorry if that happened but i was really just trying to get you some fish um because i want to thank you for for saving us out there and um give you something that you know, you might appreciate in return. You feel a mental tail wag? <laughs> As, uh, yeah, they, they express like, oh, when, you know, they're done being alive, the the scavers actually make pretty darn good eat. Oh, so. good. I have enough for 20 person-sized uh, portions. I don't know how much you normally eat, but here you go, and I'll... I don't know, toss it over to them. And then because of the tail wag, I'll, I'll ask, is, is there anywhere you like scritches? <laughs> <laughs> I know uh, I like them on the bridge of my nose a lot. <laughs> oh, man. Um, just behind the dorsal fin there is a really nice place. <laughs> Can I climb up and scritch you? These are space oh, yes. whales, right? Oh, great. Not yeah. They have dorsal fins, don't they? they? No, oh, no, not that's not fins. what I mean. That's not what oh. I mean. Oh, it's yeah, like yeah. Inside okay. check, ah, inside ah. check. Yeah. <laughs> I hear you. Uh, I mean, you know, whatever. When you scratch I mean, your dog's butt... I mean, pretty open-minded. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Fair enough. Um, yeah, they're very happy with the amount of uh, fish that they've been presented and are, are very happy with interacting with you. They seem quite pleased. I'll give them each a little hug before I climb off. (laughs) And as Gertie is climbing off of the Indori that have been so kind as to help you to the current 
location. It seems that you are approaching a current location as the Commodore puts away a spyglass and says, Land Ho! And a crooked tower that perches atop a small asteroid surrounded by a twinkling cloud of cosmic dust comes into view. Mr. Flint, ready the jolly. And that is where we'll end tonight's session. Fun. The, the jolly is a, the, a jolly boat. It's, it's, it's like mm-hmm. a life, lifeboat kind of situation. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's that's what it is. And there is one attached to the side of the second wind here. So. My father yeah. is pretty nautically obsessed, so. <laughs> sure. Uh, <laughs> you learn a lot. I'm a, I'm a bit, f- I'm a bit yeah. familiar, yeah. Yeah, I get you. A crooked tower perches atop a small asteroid surrounded by a cloud of wiggling dust. Through a spyglass, Crux examines the rock upon which the tower stands and the decrepit wooden pier that juts from one side of it. Mr. Flinch, ready the jolly. And you see the first mate uh, lower down the jolly boat on the side of the ship there and beckons you aboard it when you are ready. I will proceed on. Uh, I will as well. Brilliant. The four of you and Crux making five um, proceed to paddle across a hundred feet or so of wild space from the second wind to the dock on the ship. Scores of pelicans, molly mocks, and smaller birds nesting on the asteroid squawk as you approach the rickety dock. At the end of the dock, two gray shark-like creatures. Uh, these you recognize as scavers. Scavers. Recently bought a couple of them. Bite over the remains of a pelican. A woman in frayed robes and bare feet sits upon a rocking chair at the base of the tower, watching the fragments. Her face half hidden by a wide-brimmed hat that has a blue jay perched upon it. Uh, I can do this, right? Boom. No, not that. Um, boom, baby, boom, baby, boom. There we go. Oh, I was picturing an older person for some reason. <clears throat> That's the uh, The woman le- leaps to her feet, brandishes a staff, and snarls. Uh, ooh, what did I... Go on, get. Go on, get. That's what it was. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and a fiery ray springs from her fingertip frightening away the shark-like creatures. Uh, the jolly boat approaches the dock and you are able to disembark at your leisure. Topola notices Crux and greets him excitedly. Um, it appears they're old friends. Hey, welcome to my home. Well, why, what is this voice? Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Hello, welcome to my home. Uh, are these new friends of yours, Crux? Uh, yes. Um, you see, uh, perhaps it's better to discuss this inside. You never know where your ears might be listening. Oh, of course. As paranoid as always, I see. We can at least exchange names out here. My name is Topola. This is my abode. And she motions to the tower um, behind her. And we- Oh, I still haven't done this. Let's do this. Boom. There you go. Ooh. That's the thing. Oh. Ooh, shiny. Indeed. And you know, Topola and Crux are here too. But we'll get there. Um, this is my home. Be, uh, uh, please welcome in. Uh, do you have any questions before we go in or anything? Hello. <laughs> Hello. No, um, is it I do not wish to dawdle out here, but oh, I shoot. will introduce myself. Uh, Recounter for sure. Nice to meet you. Uh, and well, thirty. My name is Zandra. Well, aren't you all fascinating? And uh, she gives Zandra uh, a quick look over. Crux, are you? Yes, it's it's fine. I am not I'm with not. them. Very well then. Please welcome in. Is this building safe? And looks like it's about to topple over. <laughs> I like you. Uh, very safe. Yes. I, um, what was? Why was that funny? 
was no, that wasn't the pun. <laughs> oh, it, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, Are the these player, rocks? The player in me just cannot trust this person because their house looks like the Love Good House. <laughs> They're like automatically a Mister Dumbass. Are those rocks like orbiting it, or or are they just floating? Or yes, they orbit the tower there at uh, two distinct rings. I thought it offset it quite nicely. Very interesting. It's offset plenty. <laughs> <laughs> I assure you that the, my home is quite safe. I've lived it here for several years. And everything is magically enchanted, so it's not like you cannot be hurt by anything, but the house itself is quite pleasant. Mm. Okay. And she beckons you towards uh, what appears to be a blank wall at first until she lays a hand upon it and a portal opens through the wall. Not a magical one, but, you know, the the rocks shift aside and uh, allow for entrance into the first floor of the tower where, assuming you follow her in, you will find uh, four ring-shaped garden terraces line the walls of the cylindrical tower. The gardens are vertically spaced every 10 feet or so, brimming with luscious fruits, vegetables, and golden wheat. Four mechanical gnomes wearing harnesses tend to the plants. The harnesses are attached to ropes and loop around pulleys affixed to the ceiling, enabling the gnomes to hoist themselves into the air and move from one plot to another. Most of my sustenance comes from these gardens. I get regular deliveries of fresh soil from the Dawa merchants, and they get homegrown food and birds' eggs in return. Um, How wonderful. uh, Pushaw, before entering the building, in a misguided attempt to make himself slightly lighter, uh, deeply inhales. (laughs) (laughs) uh, Upon entering the building, just massive exhale and awe. (laughs) Um, How many gnomes work here? Well, there are... Wow, I don't know how to keep a voice, apparently. There are eight in total. Um, You see, I purchased a rather luxurious telescope that I keep at the top of there, and that's probably the best place for us to discuss business, now that I think of it. But along with that very expensive purchase, the creator, and one Orwick, what was that last name? Cogsworth. Yeah. Um, lent me, not lent, but uh, included eight of his autonomes, they were designed after him. And, uh, and you, uh, people can make a perception check if they like to see if they see a thing. Yes, yeah, just, just a right. It's writing that name. I'm definitely furiously scribbling these things. <laughs> you are not the first to take notes in my presence, but it is always <laughs> flattering. Um, unfortunately, your note taking, uh, led you to miss while everybody else noted um, that these gnomes are indeed numbered at the uh, color of their neck. One, three, six, and eight as they pulley and rope themselves up and down, watering and tending to these plants. Speaking of the others, shall we head up to the second floor and then indeed the top and we can cut our business up there? And she- After you. Heads over to a little platform on the side there. Um, beckons you all to stand there with her. She holds out a hand to a nearby rope and grabs it ever so gently and says, Up! And the platform and ropes move on their own and magically hoist you to the second floor. This floor houses a modest kitchen where two mechanical gnomes are preparing dinner. Furnishings include an unmade bed, a wardrobe topped with bird's nests, and a bookshelf packed with astrological text and more bird's nests. These are my living quarters, where I read my books and take my meals. My autonomes have no shortage of recipes. Today's repast is deep-fried night's steak with a lunar bechamel. 
I can be sure to have them prepare extra for you. That sounds absolutely divine. Yes. There'll be no trouble whatsoever. And upon uh, hearing that, you actually see that no move on its own to get more of um, meat from a cooler that's in the corner of the room. Seems to be a magic cold chest there for keeping things fresh. Now we continue on. And so she says, up again. Um, on the third floor, two mechanical gnomes are using rags to polish a 10 foot long copper telescope in the center of this chamber. Dozens of star like, ma- sorry, not star like, dozens of star maps lie atop tables that are also littered with sketches of planets and otherworldly landscapes. And here is my observatory. I acquired my autonome. Oh, yeah, I already told you this story from down there. That's all great. The (laughs) telescope um, here allows me to spy on all the worlds in the system and gaze at the stars and other systems as well. Would you care to have a look? Oh, oh, yes. Who first? You go first, Samuel. Oh, I'll step up to it. Can you make a perception check for me, please? Oh. And it seems like as you kind of step up to it, it knocks just slightly askew, and it looked like it was pointed at something just a second ago, but... Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Kind of fiddle with it for a moment, and it doesn't seem to get pointed at anything that seems like anything at all. Oh, no, it's, it's no trouble whatsoever. I can put that back on track there. Yeah. And... Coppola kind of guides it gently into place and beckons you to lower your head gently onto it as uh, <laughs> as you hold it in place. And what you see is um, a site you've only seen once before, and it was as you were leaving uh, the attack on your world and the crystalline vines that were planted and grown there seem to have spread even further and taking over more territory. Um, It's hard to see any particular more detail than that, but it seems time is passing in a not pleasant fashion. Oh my, that is our world that we came from? Yes, it's, well, it was the only one with life in more space. And so I do tend to watch it quite frequently and the past couple of weeks have not been good to it. It seems the Rectian Empire has chosen you to fuel their world. Do you know much about the crystals being formed? Mm-hmm. I've only heard rumors and my understanding on these things is that these attacks are used to continuously fuel the dying star of Xerix, the home space of the Xerxian Empire. Unfortunately, I don't have a map for that space here at all. They tend to keep that close to the test. The so dying story, you say? So I, I, I had two questions. Sorry. <laughs> Wendy ahead. first. Go, go ahead. Um, sorry. Do, so they plan to keep doing that um, just forever? Keep destroying planets? to run their ship. Oh, I, I, I know not their grand plan. This is just rumors and speculations, you see. I, I can't confirm that any of this is accurate. But if they use other planets to fuel theirs, I imagine they don't want that to stop anytime as, soon. As you mentioned a dying star. The star of Xerxes at the heart of Xerx space is continuously dying uh, uh, again rumors and again rumors say that they use other planets to fuel their dying star keep their civilization from dying do you know anything else about these attacks any other rumors you may have heard no i that's really again this I don't know if that's true at all. We don't have very much information at all, so this is all somewhat new to us. 
I would think. Mm -hmm. Well, we were hoping that you had a map of doom states, actually. Oh, shit. I effed up, guys. Ah, uh, ah, uh, why? Sorry, it's, things got zoomed in properly, and now, now I'm all out. Oh, no. We were hoping to meet up with the coalition there. I uh, fear I do not have a map of doom space. I do have something else. A wild space orrery. And she points to a device on a corner table. I don't much like the thing, but it is quite valuable, and I loathe to be to be a part of it, part with it. And as she's speaking, a great crash erupts from above her as stone crashes into the room, and a great black shark like creature I'm working on it guys boom there we go oh Whoa. my god Ooh, hey mama <laughs> uh, crashes into the room um, a red eye beam shoots out from this creature which levitates into the air and into its very mouth uh, one of the auto gnomes nearby it swallows it whole in one bite and just as quickly spits it out not liking the taste of the metallic mangled creature that sits before you, and instead its red eye turns to you. Mm. Roll for an issue. Well, and, shit. Uh, as I, I get you to a proper place, I'm working on it, guys. Uh, I should have done this sooner. should have done this sooner. Let go. Thank you. Why are you doing this now? Bisha is so fucking dumbstruck. <laughs> You may want to move your camera thing down to the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. Oh, there you go. Very interesting. I, I really wish this worked properly, and I didn't have to fuss about with it so vehemently. Okay. Why didn't I do this earlier? We're gonna... Boom. Processing. <clears throat> bam. Oh, bam. And also... Yeah, and we also know where the fuck. Boom. All right. Mm -hmm. What's the circle? Oh, the nouns. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, one of them. Boom, gone right there. Uh, cool, 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 cool. Brilliant. So yeah, that's what's happened. Uh, this creature is about fifteen feet in the air currently. Um, it's red eye is looking at y'all. Uh, Topola is freaking out. Crux is, is freaking out. It's going down. An uh, autonome is destroyed pretty much, mangled before you. Uh, Rokas, what do you choose to do in this moment? Are you talking currently? Because I cannot hear you. Uh, you I was. I was. Here. I said that's a great question. Uh, okay. Fair we, enough. And then we, uh, remind me. Please. We did long rest, didn't we? Uh, not since you, you did long rest, but not since the shark fight. But I don't think anybody got hurt in the shark fight. The though, I think you should be fine, pretty much. Okay, just make sure. Yeah, I think uh, so. Boy, uh oh, I didn't mean to do that. Whatever, I just did. I think I did something. Yep, didn't mean to. Guess I'll take my bird position, which is part of a creature. Is it within attacking distance or is it floating up? It's floating up a bit, but you can reach it with your attacks. Okay, let's use some fighting spirit. Ooh. Let me just check. I think that means I get some temp HP. And we are under 10th level, right? Mm -hmm. Means. Oh, okay. I still have that other HP. Isn't that correct? It's the same <sighs> day. Same day as what? I, th I, I still had temp HP on my character before for some reason I didn't understand why yeah I don't think there's a reason so. for that I don't think so either and okay that's what I thought excellent so we're gonna go like this this button and we'll hit this button twice wow that's weird whoa it, yeah <laughs> it is weird uh, and both of those attacks do miss oh I don't like that so I'm gonna action surge Ooh. and do it again oh yeah Yep, both of those attacks hit. Uh, splash, and splash. I get a, I get a bonus. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and add that. Or Whoa. it's exactly a bonus, but I get to just add that. 
Ooh, um, okay, yeah, this is uh, programmed incorrectly. You actually get two extra damage on this based on my critical stuff I've been doing. Um, so that's nine damage down there, plus 26 up there. And that looks like a total of 35 damage as black blood gushes thickly from the wounds on this creature's also so that, dense hide. That will exhaust what Ruffers can do in this moment, for sure. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, Commodore Crux says, Topola, what's going on here? As he grabs Oric 5 for those who have seen the number, uh, and gets himself in front of Topola, looking back at her, asking her what the situation is. And this is a first. Something interesting happens here. As Zanril and Gertie, you both feel so in tune with each other during this fight that your turns happen almost as if you're in sync, and you have the ability, if you can work it out, with each other over voice communication in this game to combine effects, use them to play off of each other at the same time, coordinate your movements, however you might want to do that. And it might lead to bonus effects and bullshit like that because you're just so fucking in sync right now. It feels like your crystals are fucking torn. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm please. gonna I'm gonna blast it with a guiding bolt and if I hit you'd get an advantage on on the next turn or on the next attack if you plan on attacking it I was gonna Aldridge blast it yeah perfect then what's gonna happen here is as you both go to blast it the eldritchness of your precision Zanril and the, the light that Gertie brings allows you both to take that advantage from guiding light and apply it to these attacks, sorry, guiding bolts, and apply it to all of your attacks for this round on these mm. bolty magic. Nice. Deadly. So please make the attack you would make. I'm going to be casting it at a, uh, a, a third level. Brilliant. And yeah, totally. That one hits. <laughs> do you have just that one but yeah okay. and yeah I don't have anything for my bonus action I'm gonna do bam uh, that's gonna do extra damage as well so that's 19 that's another 50 on top of that because I did it backwards so 34. that's 39 uh, <clears throat> your two magics seem to combine midair what does that look what do, what do your two different bolts look like as as they meld into each other Gertie's is a, a radiant white light that just shoots out of her staff of flowers. Very dry. Mine's, I'm oh, sorry. sorry. Go ahead. Mine's like a shooting star. And it's the most brilliant shooting star as it combines with this also brilliant white holy light as these two things pierce the blackness of this void shark like eldritch abomination in front of you and do quite a bit of damage um, will also give advantage to the next attack as Guiding Bolt normally would. Um, anything else you two want to do with the rest of your turns? That's it what? for me. Oh, this is a, a gnome here? Yeah, yeah. Crux has pulled that gnome to the other side of you is what's that happened. Okay. Um, sorry, I keep going back and forth if I should spend channel divinity slots or not. <laughs> if I am able to take a little cover behind this telescope, I would like to do that. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. Okay. I, I, I have a feeling things are going to get kind of crazy. So, oh, you know what? Never mind. I can't do that as my my bonus action. That's an action. Fucking that's shit, guys. Done. I forgot to roll the monster into initiative. <laughs> <laughs> we but got the surprise on its surprise. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's fine. We're there now. Uh, cool. And it is its turn. I'm glad I chose to roll it into initiative at some point. Um, cool. It's going to use its bonus action to do something peculiar, uh, which 
is going to point its red eye at the creature that slashed into it ever so ferociously, and it's going to ask for an intelligence saving throw from Rokos. And it shall have one short. Mm-hmm. Oh, that shouldn't be a magic. That's fine. Uh, Rokos, against your own will, you are forced to move 15 feet away from this creature and towards one of your allies. In this case, and particularly somebody in striking range, it specifically says. So, in your mind, you have a choice to make between approaching Zanril or approaching Fasta in anger. Which do you choose? Weird. Uh, Zanril. And you do. And you are also forced in your mind to make a single attack roll against Zanril, who is taking cover behind this telescope here. Okay. And you strike Zanril. you doing that. I said no. Oh, oh that's... Oh, wait, what the hell? No? Ah, okay. Never mind. I got confused because it smashed it together, so I thought that the intelligence save was, a, was an advantage attack. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Ah, uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dealing uh, five uh, damage. A quick, quick, uh, actually, five damage. Never mind. <laughs> uh, Big Mama floats overhead and down again over Gertie yeah. and makes an attack roll. A huge mouth full of teeth descends on Gertie. Uh, that did not be at advantage, though it's not. <laughs> And seems to just snap over the top of Gertie's head, slightly missing her. And that will end Big Mama's turn. I need to turn order again. Topolis says, Oh, that thing has been ravaging my tower for several months now. It comes and goes. I'm surprised you didn't see it on the way in, although it is very dark and hard to see against the black face. I have a device, a wild space orrery, and if you can rid me of this problem here, I promise I will give it to you, and that, once you are in a system, it will let you see. And that's all she can get out this turn. <laughs> sure. uh, as a free action, I will yell at her and say, like, like, very much appreciated, but we were going to deal with this either way. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to pull out my... Sorry, do I have a quarter set? I feel like I have it. Yeah, I have a quarter staff, and uh, as part of my semantic components, I'm going to whack this thing in the face ineffectively <laughs> and tell it to shoo away from uh, from Gertie, uh, casting uh, vicious mockery. All right, uh, that requires a save of some type out of this thing. I believe that's a charisma save, wisdom save. Wisdom uh, that save. would be a wisdom. DC 15. Uh, somehow, the the threat of this stick here mm-hmm. and the chewing of it, it it hurts Big Mama's feelings mm-hmm. <laughs> for a whopping two damage my lowest possible roll and disadvantage on its attacks there you go right, next attack I think Ooh. yeah that's thing. yeah next attack mm, excuse, mm, next attack indeed <laughs> Rokos roll I'm still in control. Yeah, you're totally in control of yourself. That was very temporary. And it okay. seems to, to be an effect of that red eye beam that Big Mama has. Okay. The first as he strikes gets through, but the recoil from that blade causes the second one to miss entirely. Uh, let me be sure I'm doing this correctly. That's the wrong click. That's still the wrong click. Oh, God. I keep finding ants crawling on my computer, so we must have ants somewhere. Yeah. Great. Second or third, I'm not sure which. Why can't I look at this without like Well, I'm gonna do it and then we'll read it together and see if it counts. It doesn't matter anyway. So it's a very yeah. low roll. Oh. Okay. Uh, I believe that's it for Rokos then? Yeah, that yeah, I think so. Fair enough. Uh, Commodore Crux again. Maintains hold of Auric 5, takes Topola as well, and backs the three of them away from the fight, seeming to maintain defense. Nerdy. 
You oh it's sorry, Gertie and Xandral. <laughs> I was going to hex it this time. Um I'm going to put up my <laughs> my Twilight Sanctuary. Oh, yeah. Um and it's currently it's still paying attention to me, like I couldn't never mind, no. Um yeah, I'm just gonna put up my Twilight Sanctuary, which I believe is a thirty foot radius. I'll put that on right now. Okay. Uh, you grant temporary hit points. Yeah, uh, as soon as the Twilight Sanctuary hits, the, the light of it, it hits Xanril specifically, they get um, the full 11 temporary HP. Nice. Just as that happens. Uh, can you post up the hex oh, language? I can't see to Oh, sorry, I was trying to put in the temporary hit points, but it um, hmm. wasn't letting me. Boom, there we go. Oh, we that. <laughs> you choose one ability when you cast the spell. The target has disadvantage on ability checks with that chosen ability. Um, what ability is that? Um, Wisdom. Fair enough. And I'll also say that in particular, it will also have disadvantage on any um, faves against Gertie uh, for this fight, as well cool. as Wisdom. Uh, it's negative four because of necrotic damage. I don't think it has any protection against that. Ah, uh, why, why, what is it doing? I don't want Ooh. Yeah, for some reason it won't let me type in the temp HP. Hmm. I don't like it. Let's see if I can help out. Oh, I moved you, but you know, what happens? Oh. Uh, there you go. Anything else with bonus actions or movements? Yeah. Um, am I'm I right. with the... Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> All on purpose. Uh, am I within his threat range? Like, if yeah, I can move back... Yeah, currently you okay. are. Yeah. Then, then I guess I'll see. Um, I'll use a healing word real quick on Rokos. Ooh, ooh him back up to full and then I'll roll oh, my yeah. Moonlight Sanctuary for myself. Brilliant. And that's my turn. We're back at Big Mama. Uh, what's happened? The Hex has happened recently. Twilight Sanctuary, but that didn't really affect. Brokos is still there doing damage. Let's go with the Hex as it's the most recent source of damage and that's coming from Xanril. <laughs> So we're going to be attacking Xanril this time. You see how this works, guys? Oh, but first... <laughs> um, oh, I forget I have Starlight Step. Whoops. It's fine. We'll see what, how it goes. Uh, disadvantage on attacks because of Vicious Mockery. Yup. So we're looking at a 12. Does a 12 hit Xanril? Uh, no. Ooh. Ah, e graze off of freshly adorned um, oh what are they mind flayer armor that Xanril is currently wearing as it protects them from that effect Big Mama however is not done with what they can do as their red eye turns towards Xanril and is going to ask for a saving throw out of Xanril uh oh Oh, uh, sorry, yeah. A whiz. A whiz. <laughs> okay. That's my bad. Uh, <laughs> um, is this to be charmed? Uh, nope, not a charm effect. Okay, turn off. Woo! Oh, yeah. Uh, it, you see the red light pass over you as if it wanted to do something in your mind, but it, it didn't seem to quite get through at all. <laughs> um... The placement of any stars and moons and, and uh, asteroids that are going through space uh, and and also your location in that wild space system. Uh, you have to be in the system itself. And I'll explain it all after just if you could take care of this problem. And, and uh, that's what you get out <laughs> this. Oh, and uh, by the way, I, I, you might have heard me call it Big Mama. I call it Big Mama because it's quite large. 
<laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to open this thing and it's just... <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of mine slivers. <laughs> And we're going to wrap up <laughs> this session tonight with Pasha. All right. Pasha is going to make this short, sweet, and to the point. I continue fruitlessly batting it with a stick. It's like, no, no, bad fish, bad fish. Stop it. Stop it now. And uh, this is mockery. Uh, here comes the wisdom save. At, uh, at disadvantage. At disadvantage. Thank you. Uh, it will fail the wisdom save. <laughs> And take another two fucking damage. But, you know, disadvantage. That is We take those. We take those. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to say it's sad for disadvantage. A little sad mask. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if I had a dollar for every time I rolled minimum damage, I'd have four dollars, which ain't much. But neither is four damage. Uh, <laughs> um, as... as if you were able to read the mind of, of a scaver, you might hear the echoes of bad fish. Oh. <laughs> and that will bring us to top of initiative. That it is. Oop. I need to change them for myself. There we go. Okay. Yeah, I think we're just gonna, what do I have left here? Okay, okay, I see, excellent. I think I'm just gonna do two attacks for now. Brilliant. Wow, that's interesting. It is, and it seems that both of those attacks just seem to miss under this floating creature. It's kind of hard to get a proper bearing on its height. Guess that's just how the dice roll sometimes. Let me let me double check a thing after I find my sheet. I How will. many rounds have we been in this battle? Oh gosh. Um, like, are we just I don't starting? Think it's that many. I think we're in like three. This might be the third round or so. Okay. I don't know when I used my Twilight Sanctuary, so I'm just gonna say that I have seven rounds of it left. Don't worry about it. You'll you'll be fine. <laughs> Famous <laughs> last words. <laughs> it won't be the time that gets rid of it. That's for sure. All right, so I'm pretty sure I still have uses of this. Yeah, I've got all my uses here. Uh, I'm going to use my reaction to let you add a D8 to one of those rolls. Whoa. Okay, let me roll a D8. Is that some kind of new bard ability? matter which one. Uh, That (laughs) is old school bard ability. This is just straight up bardic inspiration. Ah. Uh, D8, you said. Does that make a lick of any difference? Uh, not quite. Well, there it is. Indeed it is. Well, that's right. Yeah, we yeah, did. Palmador Crux will hold his position with uh, Topola behind him. It appears he's taken out a long sword, ready to attack. Xanro. Uh, I'm going to move on to uh, to, to uh, what, whatever his name is that he felt, uh, Crux. There's something going on with your mic, Wendy. Uh, I, I can't really understand what's happening, and we're getting like every few words. Uh oh, sorry. Is this any better? That's better. Mm-hmm. Name's good okay. now. Um, am I allowed to give Moonlight Sanctuary the temporary hit points to Mr. Hippo? To Mr. Hippo? Yes. I believe I that is that possible. possible. Okay, so eight okay. is for Rokos and nine is for, for Crocs. Boom. Oh, Done. Right, that's right. And I get stuff. Okay. Done. Absolutely. Yeah, her Twilight Sanctuary kicks ass. Oh, yeah. Okay, Xandra. Mm, well, I had this spell open, so I, I'm guessing... Oh, oh, I tried it already. Okay. Wait, what? I didn't mark that slot. Or did I? Just a minute. Okay, yeah, I did. Is it hexed? Or did that not go through? Uh, I don't believe it is currently hexed. I don't have anything that marks it as hexed. Okay. And I imagine I would have had it been hexed. Then I will try it again. <laughs> so. I think that is. Uh, how does this work? Place it's a, uh, do I? Okay. Uh, so you hex it. I don't think there's a save here or anything. Oh. Right, so... So, that's a bonus action, and I can mark a thing as, um... Whoa, 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 I went way too far. 
back. No, I, I see that it, it has a mark on it already. I think. Does it? Unless that's on Xanon. Yeah, it's like I a went... face, sleepy face. Oh, I don't now see. seeing that it's not a um, save or anything, I do. The hex is farther up on the chat. Okay. Ooh, ooh, so, ooh. so yeah, you would. Uh, yeah, it's a bonus action. So never mind. So that's be yeah, already, I suppose. Did you choose a? Yeah, you chose an ability as well, right? Do we remember yeah. what that was? Was it Wiz? <laughs> that's yes. Yeah, <laughs> this happened just minutes ago. Mm -hmm. okay. But you can choose whatever you want it to be now. It's up to you. Um, that's <laughs> let's see. I get an extra. Yeah, we'll just keep it at wisdom, and um. <clears throat> I deal an yeah. extra D6 necrotic damage. So. Which has, I imagine is this two up there? Ah, that makes sense. Okay, and so yeah, you have your action to actually do an attack and, and deal yeah. it. For, yeah. Okay, because how long does that last? Up to an hour. So it should already have it from before, right? And that was rolled. Oh, do I have an extra D6? Is that just the one? roll or do I roll it for every attack? Once per turn. That would be, f yeah. Okay. Yes. I don't know why I'm asking these silly questions and I'm just like figuring them out as I'm looking at I'm just talking out loud. It's all good. Okay. Eldridge Blast. And when in a two, so I, I, does that go on both bolts then? It deals once per turn. Okay. And so you hit this thing with uh, one bolt of force damage and with it a little bit of your necrotic energy follows and hurts this creature just a little bit more. I think that is all. Brilliant. You get 10 temporary hit points but you're already at 11. Gert's my dirt. Okay. I'm going to um, am I able to move like just to this spot instead? Yes. And not provoke anything. Yeah. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my action to cast Bless on my friends. Sorry, I'm going to do that. As, I meant to do that at a second level to include myself. Oh, well, yeah, you did. Um, and then I'm going to use my my cloak of billowing to make my, my cloak billow. Very cool. It's dramatic <laughs> as fuck as you in the moonlight that you're casting yourself billow your cloak dramatically. To uh, bless your friends. Yeah. And yourself. <laughs> Big Mama, uh, seeing that it might have uh, fucked up by attacking the tower at this time, didn't realize that Toplad's friends is going to use its action to disengage. And uh, it will begin to fly away. And it does. So I'm just not going to move it off the page for now. Just, you know, it's going to be easier. Um, and as it turns, its eye catches Gertie and hits Gertie with a ray of fear. Um, I'm going to ask for a wisdom saving throw out of Gertie. And you have failed this ray of fear wisdom saving throw. And you are frightened of the scaver until the start of the scaver's next turn. Oh my. Very scared, very scared. Um, Topla, however, is not so frightened and is in fact, uh, excited for this opportunity and runs over to each of you and says, I am so sorry, but I, it, uh, if you could take care of this beast for me, it ravages my tower once every few weeks. And she goes to each of you and it looks like she starts casting magic. Do any of you ha have any opposition to having some flight magic cast on you that you might go after this creature and end its life for me? No objections? Uh, sure. It is all right with me. Silence is consent. And she casts <laughs> fly. Uh, on all four of you guys, if you're willing to accept yep. the magic sent to you. Mm -hmm. And that's for sure. Yeah. All right. The beast the is about 40 feet above above you at this point. All right. The ability to fly isn't going to do a whole lot for me personally, but uh, let. Oh, right. I have. <laughs> I forgot I had this thing. Uh, give me a moment to uh, to look at this thing. 
and the horrifying shit it does. When it flew away, we didn't get a tax of opportunity. It used this action to disengage. Oh, I miss it. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. The eye beam was a bonus. So. Um, 60 feet. Beautiful. Okay, so I am not going to uh, to fly up. Uh, what I'm going to do is look up at this creature feet above me. It's like, I'm terribly sorry, but I must request you to come back down here. And I am going to use my shiny new psionic mitts. Ooh. Ooh. What do, pray tell? Uh, let's see. Okay, so the... Okay, there, there are two different abilities on here, and it would appear that I am using... Appear so. Ah, okay. Okay, I'm doing a different thing. Uh, I'm, I'm using the gravity wave, which does the thing that I think it does. Okay, this is going to be a DC 15 constitution save to all the creatures that are generally up from me. Fair enough. It's a 60-foot cone, and since nobody else is up there getting in my way... We're doing this. You say con save? It is a con save. The number is 16, you said? Uh, 15. Uh, Okay. The number rolled is 16. Oh. Lard. Yeah. Uh, Let me check a thing real quick. Saves do count as ability checks, correct? I do not believe so. I could be wrong about that. Um, Oh, you have a saving throw. D4 to your saving throw. Yeah. Or it does, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll shut up. I'm going to shut up now. Bye. I'll do a quick little search, though. <laughs> Essentially, no. That's, that's the, the quick answer I'm finding. All right. And I'm double checking other uses here. Damn. Um, okay, so a couple of things are happening right now. I have I have double checked this cunning inspiration ability that I have. Mm. Uh, Dom, I'm going to need you to roll another D8. Okay. Yeah, whenever some whenever a creature uses my Bardic Inspiration die, we can roll that die twice and use the higher of the two rolls. So nine to That would have been fourteen, which still wouldn't have hit the AC. Okay. Excellent. A good call. Okay, so if if the save does not count as an ability check with proficiency, then I cannot use my cutting words to to do the thing. Mm-hmm. I don't think I've got any other way to manipulate this? Sorry. Okay, so that's going to be... Does it not do damage on a... F- oh, I'm going to be really upset. <laughs> I think I'm really upset. No damage yeah, on a save? I'm, I'm going to go with really upset. There is no half damage mm-hmm. on a successful save on this. Oh. All right. <laughs> uh, I shoot a whole lot of fucking nothing up there. <laughs> It would have been badass. It would have been. What did it look like it was trying to do? Magic. Uh, it, would have, it would have shot out a, um, a wave of concussive gravity force that would have damaged everything in a 60-foot cone. Oh, shit. Well, each creature within it. Sure, sure. Well, Big Mama Owa is out of there, and it's time for Rokos to get down with the sickness. You do get 10 temporary hit points from Gertie's beautiful green light. That, that's uh, for Shaw, right? Yes, that's, that's for Shaw. Bad. Sorry. Yeah, okay. that's my bad. It's at the end yep. of your turn. End of turns. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that's, that's my, my turn. turn. That's, that's what you're, exactly that's what you're trying to say. Yep. I, yeah, that's exactly. I, I went to you and then I went and I said a thing to somebody else without specifying. I know. I see what happened. Um, I'm, I'm going to use this fighting spirit. I got, a, I got a couple more, so I'll have advantage on these attacks. Sure, sure. Imagine you're flying up to the thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I might as well swing twice like normal and use my dagger for free. <laughs> oh, yeah. That is a heck of a lot of damage yeah. against this thing at this point. Um, that's 27 plus Just like. What it looks like in this moment is just like a bad Peter Pan production and I'm <laughs> Peter Pan on the fly. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And with uh, with these three very quick attacks, it looks like you took out about another quarter of its health with just your turn. It's looking pretty effed up and another turn like that, it would not survive. 
Um, anything that, will, that will do it. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I think I have to use the bonus. Yeah, I have to use the bonus to do fighting spirit, and then the tan. I moved, and the tanto is three on the attack. How far away are you, Gertie? I mean, how far does your light go out? 60 feet. Oh, that's a big effing thing. Uh, cool. Wait, sorry, no, it's a 30 foot radius. So, 30 nah. feet from me. So, yeah, that you wouldn't get that extra that's one okay. temporary hit point. Oh, yeah. I'm flying too, aren't I? You're still on the ground. You haven't moved yet. You have the ability oh. to fly. Yes. Got it, okay. Also, you're frightened of the thing, so you can't get any closer to it. Um, Ambador Crux <laughs> is not going to do much. Uh, going to hope. Good luck out there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and settle down and uh, watch the rest of this fight from down here. <laughs> Sandra. It is 40 feet up. It is 40 feet up. I'll fly up 10 feet, so I'm within 30. Yep, but yep. I should make sure that's going to work for my other bell, too. Oh, yeah. Okay. And so I will use my Maddening Hex ability. Mm-hmm. To that. So it gets, I, I think it just happens, right? Am I reading this right? Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. It's, like it's, it's equal to my spell casting modifier. So, badass. Four. So you just do four damage to it straight up. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. If there were others around it, it would also do that, but that does not. And then that's a bonus action. That's I will cool. Eldritch. Oh, I need to. Um, well, I guess I should see if it hits first, but Eldritch Blast it. And if it hits, I can still add the Hex bonus. These do not appear to. Uh, it, it's hard to even make out this thing against the void of space itself. Well, at least I did the little bit. You did indeed do the little bit. <laughs> I'm sorry, Gertie. <laughs> you got something going on there, Gertz? Sorry. My, uh, my earbuds have been issues. Um, I, if you could hear me, I'm back. Yeah. Okay. Um, I will. Frighten just means I need to move away or not get any closer, right? Pretty much, yeah. Cool. Um, I'm going to use my action to cast Sacred Flame at this thing. Uh, oh, deck save. Here we go. It fails that deck save. It takes Ooh. seven radiant. It's not looking good at all. That's great. Um, and then I will use my bonus action to billow my cape some more. And with my Twilight Sanctuary, I'm going to end the Frightened effect on myself. Whoa! Damn! Yeah. That's how you do. Is that it? Yep, that's my turn. Indeed. Big Mama is floating out in space with a single creature near it. It is fucked up, and at this point, it wants to survive more than anything else. It's going to point its eye at Rokos and ask for a wisdom saving throw. It begins frightened, if that makes any difference for you. You have a D4 also, because you're blessed. Hashtag blessed. I'm not hearing you, Tom. What did you say about frightened, Matt? It's, uh, it's a, this wisdom saving throw would be against being frightened, if that makes any difference for you. That's all. I don't know that it does. This is not magic, right? So. No, no, it's not. No, wait. Uh, uh, magic ray. Yeah, magic. It says it's a magical ray. It says right there. It's not, yeah. Oh. It's magic. When a creature is it within five feet of me? Yeah, you zoomed right up to it, totally. Then before I do that, can I make my uh, reaction as it's casting? Well, it's not a spell. Uh, fair enough. Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. Is that what it said? I'm pretty sure that that's... But when a creature is within five feet... Okay, cast a spell, sure. Okay. Uh, I just have to read through all this stuff just to make yeah, sure totally. that it's not applying, so sorry. Yeah, I get it. Okay, yeah, it does say spells, but it's magic. Okay. So, yeah, wisdom save plus a d4, it seems. Excel so to make a wisdom for switch. Okay, okay. I think I'm just doing a wisdom saving throw here then. I don't see anything else that is changing shit up. Unless it's this. I don't think so. Okay. Here it comes. That does not. 
Oh, plus D4, you're right, you're right. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, crushing. Just one number away after oh, that. Well, yeah. And re- <laughs> uh, reaction. Take my D8. <laughs> okay, well, I guess in that case I will roll it for fun. Fair enough. Yeah, you succeed on uh, all the boosts. <laughs> yep. By our save bonuses combined. Wait a minute. How close do they? You have to be to them to use that. Boom. There you go. Done. Um, that being the case, that was a bonus action, and it's stuck here with you. <laughs> so it's going to use its action to attack. Um, and yeah, here we go with that. It's a twenty-one to hit. It deals 46 total damage. Wait, did I never do... Oh, no, I can't. Never mind. You're good. You're good. You're good. Um, a 21 to hit? Yep. My... I have 17. How much does shield give you? The spell shield? Yeah, the spell shield. Five. Uh, yeah, five. I, I use it off the ion stone. Wow. Yeah, you're about to get swallowed by this thing. And at the last second, the, uh, the spell radiates out from this ion stone and covers the entirety of your body, making a few of its teeth crunch against the magic of the shield. Ooh, good show, lad. And okay. uh, at, at the same time as as Roko says, good show, lad. Uh, you hear Topla the same thing. Sorry, yeah, shit. For Shaw says it. Topla matches that same energy with the same words. And I forgot that Xanril and Gertie had uh, charging crystals this fight, and something should have happened with that last turn. But you know, I forget my own bullshit sometimes. Uh, For Shaw, charging crystals. You have the same. <laughs> you have the same initiative, and with that, I, I explained that your turns would happen simultaneously and it, it, you might be able to work together and have interesting cool fun oh, effects great. by playing yeah. off each other i forgot, I forgot about, about that too yeah mm-hmm. yeah it was one turn for sure uh from my current position i should be able to it might have been two turns cast a certain spell a typical reputation uh, 60 feet, point within range, 10 foot radius, glorious. I should be able to cast this without harming Rokos. I'm going to drop a good old fashioned third level shatter. Oh yeah, there should be a point in space that has Big Mom and no uh, Rokos in it, no trouble at all. Mm. Uh, well, it's going to be a constitution save DC 15. It rolls a 15. Well, fuck me then. But it does half damage still, yes? Yes, indeed. Ten, uh, sorry, uh, 13 damage. And holy shit, you won't believe how much this math uh, maths out. It has exactly one HP left after surviving that chatter. Mm, that <laughs> is disappointing. A uh, counterpoint. Uh, <laughs> let, let me double check this. Another creature. I will not be inspiring myself, unfortunately. Well, that is going to do it for my turn. I'm going to keep myself firmly planted on the ground. So was that actually a recounter then? <laughs> I get it. Cross counter. You'll get caught up in the... <clears throat> Young Master Roko, so you were flying in space with a giant shark-like creature. Oh, wow. I thought it was somehow my turn already, because I kind of went on their turn, so all that shit. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that really threw me. Uh, that's because I'm not on core. Bio. Here we are. Um, I'm gonna hold on to that, so I'll just do, I'm sure this is quite correct. A one, and a two, and this guy. Wow, that's a whole lot of dog shit. All of those. Do any of those hit? Sorry? They all, oh, they all get D4s? <laughs> Yeah, all attack rolls and saving throws. Where's the oh, good That's heaven? Pretty good spell for you, huh? Why won't it? Oh, it's a lot of bless. It won't let I... me access the the I dice know. over here. Oh, oh, yeah, oh I got anything. Happening. No, it, it, it will. It just keeps it. It popping up under everything <laughs> else instead of okay. So I need to do three d fours. First yep. attacks d four. Second attacks d four. Third attacks d four. So that first one becomes a fifteen. 
followed by a 16, followed so by an 11. You just turned, yeah, that one blast turned two of these strikes from misses into hits. Um, powerful spell. How do you dice up this creature as you end this fight in the middle of space? Okay. <laughs> what, what's um, going on, Sandra? I keep ax- I'm just trying to look at something, but it keeps like hitting other things when it goes in the chat. So I'm all uh, sorry. Mm-hmm. So I was trying to, and I was trying to look at my stuff, but bullshit kept going up in the <laughs> chat, uh, so I couldn't mm-hmm. see. Where'd the handouts go? Ah, uh, right here. I wanted to to I wanted to look at it again. Sure, I sure. Could, but I don't see I, it I, there. I, yeah, I can help out with that. Um, here you go. Yeah, um, it's just, I'm just gonna, it's like sharp, like, I'm just gonna dice it up real good, but the final is just me severing that eye stalk. And as you hear it scream as its eye stalk floats out into the void of space, it gives one final belt, and out comes what looks to be some kind of magic suit of some kind. Ooh. It, uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> Absolutely, and I'm working on where is that kid? There we go, and it looks a little bit like oh, there's no picture. Too bad. Uh, well, I guess it's not. You'll find out what it is later, but it looks pretty magical. You might want to grab it. I'll grab it. Good call. Um, as you sink yourself back down to the tower. Uh, Topola is already thanking your friends there at the bottom. Uh, Thank you so much. That beast has been torturous for years now. It's a true relief. Um, Which one of you would like this? uh, Well, it's an orrery. It's a lot. (laughs) It's, well, you, you look inside here. And there's no picture of this either? What the fuck? Why would there not be a picture of this? That's dumb. Um, But I can show this to you. And she explains that once you are within a wild space system, this maps out all the different points of the wild space system. As you can see, we're here in war space. And here's my tower. And there's your planet. And it's three moons. Mm Mm-hmm. And there's Daedalus, and the, oh, the Rock of Brawl is in the wild space system at this time. Wonders. I have, I have seen something like this before, but it only had our, our world and, and our three moons. There's how much more is there? Well, it, if you don't know if a body is there, it's truly hard to look. There's all kinds of little rocks everywhere. You, I only recognize the shape of the Rock of Brawl, and your plan. Oh. And Daedalus is always there, just floating on the other side of your sun. There's so much I haven't seen. There is very much out there. Oh, this is just your wild space system. As you must know, pointing towards Xanril. Racist. Outside of, <laughs> yes, <laughs> undoubtedly. Um, outside of this wild space system is the astral plane itself, and within the astral plane lies so much, so many other wild space systems. You're fighting against a group of people from a place called Xeric Space. And I believe Crux needs to go to a place called Doom Space. And I don't have a map there, but once you are at Doom Space, this orrery will allow you to know where you are and where you're going. Uh, I, I heard that is cool, and I didn't hear the recounter. I said this is dreadfully and fascinating. Would Very much so. Which one of you would like to hold on to this for now? Uh, Bashaw looks on to the rest of the party with wide, hopeful eyes. But Gertie steps back. This is too much. <laughs> I will take it if nobody objects. <laughs> The uh, <laughs> I was too polite to no, reject. There's <laughs> hope and optimism. Gone. <laughs> and she hands you, um, well, just in case you ever do want to sell it one day, this might come in handy. 
and she hands you the identification slip for the wild space artery. Because he's somewhat modeled after the elephant and cats don't dance, I'm just picturing him playing his trunk like a trombone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that's a handy item too, she says, pointing over to Rokos. And uh, she quickly does a little bit of magic and creates an identification slip for this and hands it to Rokos. I don't know if you'll be holding on to it, but you know, just so you know. Hmm. Hmm. Seems useful. Ooh, that'd be that would be very useful for him since he has like zero intelligence. He doesn't have zero intelligence, but his intelligence is not up to par for moving around in space. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. It would cause Wait, moving in space too, is connected to intelligence. Pretty sure, isn't that what we learned? I don't uh, remember. Not in wild space, but in the on the astral plane, yes. Oh shit. He's gonna be <laughs> um, so, but before you depart from our wild space to head to Doom Space, I I can't help but think that there's a potential that you might be able to find a few more allies here. You see, I have an old. You you see her pause for a moment. And think, friend, um, a, a, a pirate called Grimzod Garganhale. He's fought many battles against the Astral Elves, and I think he could be convinced to join your fleet and help against this massive empire that you seem to be up against. I can give you instructions, or I could show you the way if you wouldn't mind another passenger. Absolutely. You could use all the help we can get. He is trustworthy. Uh, yes. I I think so. Well, I don't see why not then. Um, uh, just, well, you're going to be here for a few days anyway, right? With the ship being down? Yeah. I suppose so. Everywhere. Crux, do you know what happened to your ship? Uh, yeah, it was an aesthetic. It did a, a jammer scream. Ah, I may be able to help. And you see Topola cast fly on herself as well. No, wait, hey, guys, don't leave. And she flies out of the tower. Just meet me outside. And she flies out to the ship across wild space. Leaving you alone in her tower. follow her, right? Yes. Yes. Come on. No. Yeah. She does this all the time. We gotta catch up to her. There's no telling what she's doing on the ship. And Commodore Crux turns out of the room. In. Um, cool. And so you do. And you make your way onto the Jolly Ship, assuming you do. Uh, is yeah. there anything you want to do in the tower before you're leaving? <clears throat> I don't know. Your call. Uh. I don't have anything. Fair. Me neither. Birdie is just going to be like looking around her in wide eyed astonishment. So, can she maybe make a perception check to see if there's anything that catches her eye that she would want to look into more? Sure. Absolutely. Okay. Is Gertie interested in birds? Yes. There are, like, right as uh, you're at the exit, there looks to be a nest of albatross eggs that is currently unguarded how many they, eggs? there's three and they look by your reckoning like they're likely ready to hatch oh well is there a, a, a mother albatross you don't see one around right now okay is just gonna admire them and she's going to use her her stack of flowers to grow a couple of the flowers and leave them in the nest but then we leave it because she couldn't stand to break the thing when we like that and it's a very sweet moment as uh you're pretty sure that your flowers are going to protect against anything that might get at these creatures while the mother's away <laughs> brilliant um and yeah as you are making your way back to the second uh, second wind yeah second wind you see Topola uh, doing some magics over Starbo 
and she says, ah, yes, you finally caught up. And Fel was there. Uh, this lady just flew onto the ship and started messing with Starvo. Is that going to be okay? Should I take her out? Commodore Crux jumps in. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. She's seeing if she can help. She's like, I've been on a lot of vessels like this in the past, and I've seen a number of star screams or jammer screams. Give me one night, and I think I might be able to do something tomorrow morning that might hasten this process a bit. I'd be great. In the meantime, I will have the Oryx make us some food. How's a uh, scramble sound for everybody? <laughs> I don't know yeah. what that is, but I'll try. A scramble of what? Uh, who, what? Who am I kidding? I'm I'm happy to try it regardless. Well, we I have lie. many choices of uh, eggs back all over the place. And yeah, there are tons of birds around, different types all over the place. And of course, uh, plenty of freshly grown produce. And if the, unless there's anything else you two would... Not you two. You all would like to do... With the rest of the day, you can take a long rest and enjoy, or even if there is, you know, something. Is there anything you would like to do while you're on Topolis Tower uh, for a night? Mm. I don't think so. No. You would just explore. And Topolis would totally allow for that. Yeah, she's really open with her place. She points out all the little nooks and crannies where the different birds are hiding. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Not, not every nook and cranny. <laughs> <laughs> Or you just like when she finds ones that she likes, she'll just like post up there and stare at it for a long time. And yeah, it is fascinating watching the, the little societies that the different kinds of birds have made with each other. There seems to be like a trading thing going on with straw. It's weird. Hmm, not too different from my. <laughs> um, and with that, yeah, long rest happens. Um, when morning time comes around, Topola. Unless there's something I'm skipping. I'm not trying to skip over anything. Uh, cool. Topola approaches Starbo in the morning and says, this is experimental, but I think I might be able to just... And she casts a spell and... Yeah. Starbo seems to slowly and groggily... And it's hard to tell that it's slow for Starbo. It's almost imperceptible when it starts to move. But the ship doesn't roar back to life so much as it creaks back to life. <laughs> Why? Well, thank you. No trouble at all, my good man. May I? Oh, yes, please. And Topola <laughs> sits in the seat and she wiggles a little bit into Starbo. And she begins to attune, and she says, "Well, I am ready whenever you are." Great! This uh, is amazing that you were able to fix it up so fix up Starbo so quickly. Well, thank you. I am somewhat accomplished when it comes to spell casting and spell crafting, but I'm not sure that's something I can do every time. It's not what something I think I can do? teach. Uh, well, I kind of put together a little bit of a restoration spell with a little bit of talk with, uh, sorry, talk with um, plants and, you know, little bits here and there and voila. So you mix your magics? Experimentally, yes. Whoa. I, it's just something that comes sometimes. I'm not sure it's something I could replicate. I didn't know that was even possible. It is for NPCs. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying not to do that, but you know, <laughs> I can't give you the magics. Just needed to get the story going. I didn't want you stranded yeah, yeah. here for a week. <laughs> that's good, that's good. <laughs> and with that fourth wall break, <laughs> we end our session here as we are ready to leave Topolis Tower and yeah. you hear thank you and you hear Fel Ardra complaining about not being to fly the ship anymore and what is she even there for now oh. you can stay here no on this rock 
No way. These birds are disgusting. <laughs> she is now flying Starbo in the second wind towards a spot in wild space, whereupon you might hopefully meet up with this pirate captain. Any bits that you want to uh, do in the meantime? She reckons it will be two or three hours before you might arrive there. Not for me. Mm -hmm. Me neither. Nothing comes to mind. Fair enough. After a short amount of time, um, dead ahead, you see a cloud of debris that appears to be the drifting wreckage of several ships. Crux shouts, to arms, peering through his spyglass he has. Looks like three flying fishes, three lampreys, two oh. squid ships, and two star moths. And oh. we're, oh, we're wow. going right for them. Oh, that is quite a few animals. All ships. Takes uh, a look at. Oh, oh yes. Yeah, okay, I see what's happening. Yeah. Is, or is there least, any way to no. avoid them? We could go around, but it looks like it's a field of debris. It, I'm not sure how many of these ships are still functional. We can pass ah. right through. Oh. Unless you prefer to go around. Do we suspect that there could be anyone left that could try to attack? It's possible, but it's also possible that the people that we're looking for are in there, right? And Topola says, yes, it's quite possible. Then I suppose we should go through. Yeah, I think so, too. And uh, Topola guides the ship. You notice that while Fel was pretty... It, she used the momentum of the ship more, and it felt more uh, unforced. Topola is very precise. Sharp turns, but things are exactly as they are directed to be. It's a different feel with her in control of the ship. Um, uh, as you are passing through the wreckage, you spot a blood red pirate flag drifting in space as it becomes snagged on one of the ballista on the second wind. And I'd like you to make a perception check for me, please. Anybody who might be looking out for things. What the lets second us wind know... is the ship we're on, right? That is the, the ship you're on. What lets you know? What lets us know that it's a pirate flag? Uh, that would be a skull uh, that is emblazoned <laughs> upon it uh, in black. Uh, well, you Roger. might not know it based on that rule. <laughs> <laughs> I was going off the fact that it said, like... Yeah, I, I'm just teasing you. Oh, wait, whenever you make... Okay, never mind, that's persuasion. Okay, all right. I believe that is my role. Okay. Uh, Gertie, you see two human corpses as they begin to drift close to your ship. Are um, they, like, with the pirate flag, or are they just separate entirely? This is, yeah, they're floating a bit away from the pirate flag, although there's a lot of debris. Uh, th <laughs> the wreckage of, I believe it was a total of, yeah, 10 ships are, are here. Um, different pieces all intermingled with each other in, in a lot of ways. Um, so, yeah, they're not specifically tied into okay. the pirate flag itself. There's humans floating out there. Well, I suppose that is to be somewhat expected in a wreckage like this. Do we think that they could possibly be saved? And as the question is asked, two bodies, those same two bodies, bump against the side, the hull of your ship. And then they suddenly begin to move and crawl <laughs> aboard the vessel. Oh. Um, do, 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 do. I'm trying to pull up a picture. Give me a second. Crawl aboard. Boop, 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 boop. There we go. Here we go. I can show this to y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I was not expecting that. Yeah, me either. That's fun. <laughs> they look so cordial, like they're giving a little bow. Yeah, like, hello. <laughs> Good day. <laughs> Vampires are <laughs> uh, And these two have happened to survive. Um, just gonna... Oh boy, there's a whole thing happening here. Boop. And we're gonna layer this to uh, there. Oh boy, and now I need to be on the other layer. Of course, of course, Matthew. You damn fool. Excuse me. Ow, sorry. Couldn't get to my mute in time. Uh, 
as these two are climbing up, they're, uh, it's, oh, hello, hello, yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> why not? Because you guys did it. Um, <laughs> I had other voices in mind, but you know. Uh, <laughs> you, uh, uh, may, please, please, may we speak to the captain? Uh, we, yes, yes, we, uh, we are in need of a new commission. We are here to help. Commodore Crux says, uh, whoa, whoa, they're, these are monsters, these are undead pirates. Please dispatch these, uh, creatures crawling aboard my ship, a- asking around frantically for, for your help. And these two are asking to speak to y'all. And, um, that's what's happening currently. Not to y'all, they're asking to speak to the captain. Yeah. Would we have any kind of knowledge of these creatures and whether they are, you know, generally monsters, I guess, and like, Uh, or deserved to be talked to? I mean, man, you can roll. Let's go with a history check, I guess. Or uh, if you have another idea, Um, there are definitely creatures somewhat similar to this. The, in the place that you've come from, but whether or not you know about them is what we're questioning. It's an 18. Yeah, an 18 would definitely... Yeah, there are stories of creatures on your world, this one, called vampers, that are fairly similar to that, to, to these creatures. Um, you can tell by the sallowness of the skin thereof. Uh, the, the pirate version specifically, and a space pirate version, may be a little off your radar, but uh, vampires could be any range of good to bad, really. Uh, but you know that they typically need to feed on at least life force, if not blood. Um, but, you know, a lot of things need to eat. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Perhaps we should hear them out. <clears throat> I say to Commodore Cracks. Uh, our, uh, roll a persuasion check. At the first sign of funny business, I'm going ham. Totally. I hear you. You got your eyes out. And yeah, they have not gone for weapons yet at all. Hands out. Well, any sign of aggression and it's blunder time. I'm just putting that out there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and with that persuasion check, it feels like Commodore Crux is pretty much on the same page. Look, I, you may not be able to, we may not kill you, but you can't stay on the ship here. There's no way I can trust you. And they say, please, please. As you can see, we are just survivors of the battle around here. And it's it's simply that uh, our captain, Garganhill, uh, well, we're not sure if he made it or not. And so we're looking for a new position. Excuse and me. throwing some stuff here on the side because I... Yeah, yeah. Um, with the mention of the name, Crux slows his roll a little bit here and uh, says, Garganhale, when was like, where were you see last seen? And they said, we can take you to where the last breath was last seen, but the last we saw of it, it was being chased down and was very nearly destroyed. And uh, Topola chimes in, yes, please, uh, let's head that direction. What was chasing you? The Xerixian Empire. The, as we took out a few of the star moths there. As she, it, well, that's sorry, that's the wrong voice. Whatever. Um, that's one of the vampires. We took out some of the star moths up there. You see, mm-hmm. and um, well, we were uh, taken out as well. Many of the ships were. How you many see, of you were th- there fighting it? <laughs> That's a very good question. That's where the ship is. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Um, uh, there were there were seven of us in the fleet, seven ships that is, and we were attacked by four of theirs, uh, two squid ships and two star. Sorry, five of theirs, two squid ships and three star moths. Uh, most of it, the. Both fleets are destroyed around us, but last we saw of them, the last breath was being chased off by a, a, a third star moth out mm. into wild space. Do you believe there to be any other survivors? If there are, it would be the captain himself and, and his flagship. And our guess it would be that direction. And they point off a direction into wild space through the 
cloud of debris around you. Well, should we follow their direction then? I am just as likely to kill them right here as they're standing. They kind of creep me out. <laughs> but it's your planet on the line. What do you think? Could their their ships that they have be useful to us and our needs? Oh, the, the other vampire chimes in. Oh, yes. Yes, uh, we are very, very capable fighters. If, if you're looking for fighters, that's why we were hoping to get a job aboard a vessel like this. We thought we might be able to be of help. And forgive me if this is a bit too forward, but I understand that um, your eating conventions are um, <laughs> not quite normal. Um, <laughs> how are we to um, trust? <laughs> uh, fair point. Um, I think in this case, you can trust that we are very interested in survival. And I don't think we have any chance against folks as strapping as you lot. Inside I, check, inside yeah, I, I was adding two, too. <laughs> I mean, totally. Yeah. <laughs> these, like these oh, shit. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Rokos, they're going to need to eat at some point, but they're not planning to attack. It doesn't feel like they're planning to attack you. It feels like that's honest. Like, okay. they need to survive, and attacking you is not the way of going about that. Uh, Zanril, like, yeah, you're kind of like, you might be a little like attracted to the person <laughs> it was a very charming kind of a statement i wholeheartedly I believe them <laughs> um, they will not harm mm. us <laughs> um gertie was kind of hoping more for an insight of their strength in general oh sh- so sure. can i get is a 14 it? level i don't know maybe oh not. sure sure a 14 level inside of strength in general i feel like that is like a specific class ability but as far as like maybe not. i feel like it would fit with gertie's backstory i hear you <laughs> i hear you uh, yeah, i think there yeah, is I, a fighter subclass that can like size people up yeah, yeah. there's that but that's like, i don't that's mean like really necessarily specific in comparison yeah, you're right that's or specific, like higher that or lower numbers you're right so yeah, I, I feel you feel like you could take on one of these things by yourself. Okay. Hmm. If you needed to. Mhm. Hmm. I think we could maybe use their help, but be keeping a close eye on you. Anyone helping to fight could be useful. Mhm. You can keep as close an eye on me as possible, says the oh, uh, I will. taller male one. Gertie <laughs> 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 uh, gives Xanaril a little bit of side eye, like, what? what? What's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I didn't, I didn't realize we were going to run with it, but... <laughs> um, cool. You put it out there. That's yeah, you're fan. right. Yeah, that's <laughs> very fair. Um, cool. All right. Topola, I guess, take us in that direction. And, um, Let's yeah. move. <laughs> God damn it. And I'm out, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I am the SpongeBob meme. <laughs> that's enough. Cool. Uh, we, could, we don't need that bit, it feels like. And yeah, wow. Um, after about 15 minutes, you are caught in a cosmic storm. Lightning oh, flashes no. through a dense blue and purple clouds illuminating the silhouette of a galleon with torn, flapping sails. Mm. Ghastly mariners stand on deck and cling to the rigging, staring at you with unblinking eyes. Are they with you? Yes. Yes, that's our, oh. that's, that's the last breath. Oh. And as you draw within 250 feet, sorry, sorry, as you draw within 50 feet of each other, the galleon's captain steps into view. A pallid, white-haired man with a barred metal mask covering the lower half of his face. Oh, I can, I can do one of these. Okay, I'll probably. Oh, do it. Yes. Oh, oh, not that. Not this. I, that's not do what it. this this is what I want to show you. There do we it. go. Oh. Oh. Wow. That's creepy. His left hand detaches at the wrist. Skitters up to 
his <clears throat> uh, up his arm onto his shoulder and waves at you with its fingers. <laughs> so that's how thing came to be. Okay. <laughs> and Topola <laughs> waves. There he is, Grimzod Garganhill. And Crux sneers. Vampires. He keeps one hand holstered on his pistol. <laughs> mm-hmm. And that's where the chapter ends. Woo! Like that, I, I, yeah, that's that's kind of Do it. That's, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. That works. Yeah. We should probably. I told you. I, I didn't realize this could have been a fight. Like, so it could have mm-hmm. taken longer. Yeah. But yeah. Um. But cool. We're here. And that. Yeah. I don't know what else to tell you guys. That was a twenty-minute session. I'm, I'm so it's sorry. Right. It's That's fine. fine. Yeah. Especially no considering we were so I got, late to wa- <laughs> I got to watch live the meme of rolling a botch, and you all of a sudden have sensual feelings for the enemy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Which- know. That's it crazy. also extra makes sense of vampires, though. I thought that's kind of like what you were going That's for exactly too, what so. I was going yeah. for. Yeah, okay. that, and, and <laughs> I, I didn't realize. But yeah, that's fair. It's, it makes a lot of sense. Oh, but, I was just playing <laughs> along, too. Yeah, exactly. But like, whatever. Yeah. Who cares? And... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good point. Right. It's part of the story it's now. It's all coming together. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Um, I'm not even sure which one it was, because there's two of them, though. So. And they both have distinct names. Do you guys see those yet? Probably not. Nope. nope. Boom. So, Rings, Basil. Rings. Oh, Dorgio Dolly. Working on it, working on it. Boom. Italia oh, Dagermore. And one is like more male presenty, and that's Dorgio. Vitalia is more female presenty. Uh, Zanriel doesn't care. It, well, I know, but <laughs> for Carmen, now I have to choose. So. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. All right, we'll work now. Anyway, I started blasting. We'll call it Dorgio. Can you guys hear those when I do those? Yeah, very quietly. Oh. Barely heard yeah. that. Yeah, I hmm. got it. Though. Oh, probably because if I do this, I'll try this. Anyway, one. I started blasting. Oh, yeah, that was, that was better. Yeah, there it is. 